Hey guys, uh, don't mind the stuffy, scratchy sound of my voice and the stuffly and maybe the coughing and things. I've got like a head cold. It's pretty awesome. Book review. I'm going to talk about a series of books today that I like. Um, they are by the author Richard K. Morgan. It's sci-fi. Um, it's fairly hard sci-fi, as in he just kind of assumes that you're a bit of a sci-fi geek and you're just going to roll with it and accept it. I like that because I am that kind of sci-fi geek. But three of them are, are a trilogy. It's a series of books, and it all follows the same main character. Uh, the character is named uh, Takeshi Kovach. Um, the first book in the series is... Hopefully you can see that. Altered Carbon. Basically, it's the, the first book in the series that sets things up and introduces things. Uh, the central points in this that I find really interesting, um, from a sci-fi geeky point of view, is the idea of what, the, what he's dubbed cortical stacks. The idea is that... Um, we can digitize the human consciousness. Um, so all your memories, your feelings, your personality, all that stuff that makes you you in your brain, we can take all that and we can digitize it. Um, and then we can store it on a in a something called a cortical stack. And it's basically described as being about the size of a cigarette, but it fits in the back of your head, in your skull, just the base of your skull, in your spinal column. And basically it can store that. Um, and what this allows you to do is... Um, <laughs> You can, well, you can do a lot of things. If you can digitize consciousness, think of it is like think of it like we can do with music now. Um, you know, what can you do with music? Well, I can send it across the internet. I can put it on different devices. I can play it on my home computer. I can play it on an iPod. I can put it on this and that and the other and yada yada yada. Um, now imagine that it's the future, 500 years in the future. 500 years in the future, we colonize multiple planets by following astrogation charts. Astrogation charts are kind of like nautical charts, so you can know where you're going only in space instead of on the water. Astrogation charts left by Martians. There were Martians. Yes, they were on Mars. We found their ruins. We went to Mars, and we found these star maps to tell us where to go, where they were, where their cities were, so we can follow them and know when we get there to be a habitable planet. We don't have FTL, faster than light, capability, so no warp drives, no trans light drives, no singularity drives, what did Star Trek call, or Star Wars call it? Um, hyperdrives, no, don't have that, sorry, none of that. Um, and we can go pretty quick, but we're still stuck at sublight speeds. Um, so we don't just, you know, you don't blink, blink, and you're there. Um, but what you can do is you can send information at FTL speeds, so nearly instantaneously across any distance. By having the ability to digitize human consciousness, you can now um, send the file of someone's uh, personality slash consciousness across interstellar distances in the blink of an eye. Um, we have cloning. We can clone bodies. We have uh, genetically and uh, cybernetically enhanced bodies that you can then be, um, they call it sleeving. In other words, you know, a body is a sleeve. It's no longer a body because it's pretty damn hard to, to destroy a cortical stack. I mean, you have to really want to. So let's say you have an accident. As long as most of your head is still there, they can dig that out and they can plug it into another body and there you go. Um, other things you can do is you can put it into an AI construct, construct which is kind of like a virtual world. Um, you can switch bodies, You can. they have custom designed bodies for dancers, for soldiers, for all this stuff. So that's some of the background. If I make it sound bad, ignore me, um, because it's not, it's really good. One of the issues this brings up is you still have a ruling political body. Uh, in this case, it's the UN, the United Nations. Um, and they are, in theory, in charge of all of the different planets we colonize as well. They are the ruling body on Earth, uh, unified government type thing. And they want to make sure that all the colony planets stay in line. Well, let's say that, you know, we're on Earth where the, the government is, and let's say that some planet that's 120 light years away starts uh, having some political problems, and they decide they don't want the UN running things. Can they get rid of those people? Um, what, can, what can the UN do? Well, if you send a, our fastest ships there, it's going to take damn near a little over 120 years to get there. So by the time you get there, you're going to have a chance to basically talk to the winner's grandkids and find out what happened. And that's not an effective way to run a, they call it a protectorate. Um, so what they've developed is what they call the Envoy Corps. An Envoy is normally kind of like a diplomat, like someone you send to kind of, you know, push your side. They're, they're your Envoy. They're basically diplomat would be the best analogy. Um, the term has been kind of like, you know, loosely um, taken on are kind of ironically taken to mean um, the UN envoys are basically think like the worst parts of James Bond as far as like covert infiltration along with the worst parts of the Navy SEALs as in killing people and the thing to keep in mind is even people like that especially when you look at special forces in our current context 
98% of what those people do that make them elite soldiers is, is physical. It's, it's all running and, and practice and muscle memory and making the body into that. I mean, a lot, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of phys- or a lot of mental stuff that goes with it and that sort of thing, but imagine if all of a sudden you took away the ability to, you know, if, if you took them out of that body and put them in a fresh body, even with the knowledge they have that, they don't even know how to use their own body. So envoys are trained to basically jump into another person's bot into a strange body on a strange planet and start doing their thing which is usually killing people and or taking things back over within hours you know they're hitting the ground running and it kind of there's a lot of talk in the book about that so i don't think i've given away too much i think that's pretty much the setup that you'll learn about in the first few chapters um so we'll go back to this one so that's the stuff for the whole world but anyways altered carbon um is the first chapter the prologue basically and this is one of the reasons i loved it is that um Basically, the book starts with the hero getting killed. All right, that's a little bit of a spoiler. But that's like a four-page spoiler, so you're not going to miss much there. Any book that starts with the main character slash hero, because hero's maybe not the best term, getting killed, is is going to get my attention pretty quick. Um, he then proceeds to wake up on Earth, which is not where he's from. Earth is basically a, a shithole. It's kind of like America is now, actually, in that it's uh, closed-minded. Uh, there's no innovation. It's just this ridiculously oppressed, not oppressed is the right word, but like socially and creatively drained. All the people who like to think differently and, and that sort of stuff, they all left when they had the chance. So Earth is kind of a shithole. Um, and basically he's been employed by this super rich guy who's been living for like 400 straight years by just leaving the new bodies every time he gets older, dies, or he keeps cloning himself. Um, perfectly legit, perfectly legal, not like a mutant freak or a monster or anything. It's just, he's a very powerful person. Um, think if Bill Gates could just kind of start over in a fresh 20-year-old body when he, well, now, and if he kept doing that until, say, 2,500-something, um, what kind of person would he be, What that sort of thing? Um, and this guy thinks that He's been murdered. Everyone says it was suicide because basically he blew his own head off with a gun only he had access to. Huh? Um, and that's kind of where it starts. And it's, um, it's they call it sci-fi noir, uh, so it's very dark. Um, it all takes place in Bay City, i.e. San Francisco, um, California, on Earth. Um, there's a few jaunts around from here to there. I didn't put it down for, I mean, I think I read through it straight through in like pretty much a day. Winner of the Philip K. Dick Award. New York Times, ferociously readable. This is some of the crap that people write on the back of books. Uh, USA Today said, Gritty and vivid, looks as if we have another interstellar hero on our hands. I've rambled way too long, this is going to be like 13 minutes long, so i got to stop now. I'll let it all bound to something reasonable.